My beloved viewers are enjoying this kind of video so much that I couldn't help myself but release another one. So in this video, we'll go over yet another fight summary from the Infinity Castle arc. And this time, we have Tanjiro and Giyu versus Akaza. Tanjiro and Giyu are running in the castle, trying to find Muzan and Tamayo. They've just heard about the death of Shinobu Kocho at the hands of Upper Moon 2 Doma. Tanjiro promises her that they'll win for sure. Suddenly, a tremor appears, shaking both demon slayers. Tanjiro recognizes a familiar smell, and the roof above them breaks, revealing that this is Akaza. Akaza is surprised that a weakling like Tanjiro is still alive and shouts his name, with Tanjiro screaming his name in return. The fight between the three begins, and finally Tanjiro has a way to avenge the death of Rengoku. As Akaza advances, Tanjiro dodges his punches and uses the Hinokami Kagura Fire Wheel, and with considerable effort, severs his arm. As Tanjiro tries to recover, Akaza attempts to behead Tanjiro with the back fist punch, which Tanjiro dodges and counters with the Hinokami Kagura Fake Rainbow, managing to create a long cut on Akaza's face. Looking at this fight, Giyu is quite amazed and surprised by Tanjiro's sudden and quick improvement, comparing his abilities to that of a Hashira. Akaza remembers Kyojuro's words about Tanjiro not being weak and accepts it as a fact, deciding to acknowledge him by activating his technique development, Destructive Death Compass Needle, while indicating the start of the real battle. Giyu enters the fight, immediately using the water-breathing Third Form Flowing Dance, Akaza is instantly impressed, as it had been 50 years since he last ran into a water Hashira. He uses his Destructive Death Disorder, a flurry of punches that produces giant shockwaves, which Giyu negates using his 11th form Dead Calm. Akaza remarks that he had never seen this technique used by the previous water Hashira he last fought. While Tanjiro tries attacking from behind using the Hinokami Kagura Raging Sun, Akaza appears from behind and attempts a backhand chop, but Giyu cuts his hand. As Giyu attacks Akaza, Tanjiro tries to stop him by using the Hinokami Kagura Flame Dance on his legs. However, he's countered by Akaza's upper kick. Even though Tanjiro is able to block the technique, he's hit hard enough to spit blood. Akaza continues to battle Giyu and is impressed by the Hashira swordsmanship, asking for his name. Giyu refuses to tell him and Akaza replies that he would ask again and again and kicks Giyu, launching him through various walls to another side of the castle. Tanjiro then screams Giyu's name, and Akaza tells Tanjiro, Oh, so Giyu is his name, while advancing for another attack. Tanjiro and Akaza attack each other at the same time, and Akaza praises his improvement and claims that Kyojiro did an amazing job, and that he's pleased with his death saying Kyojiro couldn't possibly improve any further. This enrages Tanjiro, who tells him not to speak of Kyojiro's name, and this prompts Akaza to give his philosophy of how he hates the weak and wishes they were eliminated. Tanjiro retorts by saying that even Akaza was once a baby, and babies are the weakest, and that someone had helped him while he was in this state. He continues by stating the strong should aid and protect the weak and he wouldn't let Akaza do as he pleased any further. Tanjiro's words shake Akaza as he feels restless. But before we continue with the video, let me tell you all about today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Now, let's embark on an extraordinary journey together. It's time to explore the dark and captivating world of Raid Call of the Arbiter, an animated limited series based on the thrilling game Raid Shadow Legends. Trust me, this is something you won't want to miss. Raid Call of the Arbiter takes us deeper into the enchanting realm of Teleria. With its 10 action-packed episodes, each around 5 minutes long, this limited series unveils the backstory and lore fans have been craving for years. The best part? You can watch it for free within Raid Shadow Legends. And the series is off to a great start, with over 5 million views of episodes 1 and 2 so far and thousands of positive comments. People are loving Raid Call of the Arbiter. I've already delved into the first three episodes, and let me tell you, it's mind-blowing. The animation is top-notch, and the score by the incredible Jesper Kid adds an extra layer of intensity. For all the dedicated Raid fans out there, you're in for a treat. The limited series brings a host of new features, including additional champions and lore directly connected to the series. And don't forget the exciting in-game activities. 
There's never been a better time to join the adventure or return if you've been away. And here's the best part. Raid Shadow Legends wants to reward your loyalty with something truly special. By simply logging into the game for seven days between now and July 24th, you'll have the chance to unlock Artek, one of the five new characters from Raid Call of the Arbiter, as a playable legendary champion for free. If you haven't yet embarked on your raid journey, I've got an incredible offer for you. By using the link in the description or scanning my QR code, you'll receive mind-blowing bonuses. How does an epic champion Drake from the Lizardman faction sound? Plus, there are other useful items to boost your gameplay. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description to download Raid Shadow Legends. Now, back to the video. And memories of Keizo appear saying to him the same words. Suddenly, Akaza tries to punch behind him like there's someone there, and Tanjiro doesn't understand what's going on. Akaza brushes it off and realizes it was nothing but a hallucination. Angered, he claims Tanjiro to be unpleasant and uses his destructive death, crushing type, 10,000 leaves flashing willow, and becomes much faster as Tanjiro attempts to dodge. The demon surprises Tanjiro and kicks him with his destructive death leg type flying planet Thousand Wheels, making him cough up even more blood. He compares Akaza's precision to that of a magnetic compass and begins to think and deduce using the demon's moves and words. Tanjiro dodges another kick by Akaza and attacks him with the Hinokami Kagura Solar Heat Haze. Akaza manages to avoid the technique. However, a considerable portion of his neck is sliced and he expresses amazement, asking Tanjiro how he swung his blade. Tanjiro attempts to use the Hinokami Kagura dance, but the sword is clasped in Akaza's hand, and he attempts to break it. Tanjiro uses headbutts and kicks, trying to make Akaza loosen his grip, despite the demon not budging. Luckily, his hands got cut by Giyu, angry about the deadly kick Akaza gave him previously. Giyu senses awaken, and a mark appears on him. He easily dodges a shockwave punch and gives a quick slice of his own. Akaza dodges, but the attack slices a small portion of his neck. The demon acknowledges the increase in speed as Giyu surprises him with a sudden water-breathing fourth form striking tide, vertically slicing Akaza's right arm. Tanjiro notices that Akaza has matched Giyu's speed and wonders how Akaza's attacks are so accurate. He suddenly remembers words from Akaza and Inosuke Hashibira, the latter explaining how he's able to sense killing intent and how he cannot detect people behind him if they have no killing intent. Meanwhile, Giyu and Akaza fight on equal ground, with Akaza having fully adapted to Giyu's speed. Tanjiro attempts to use the Hinokami Kagura dance, but is stopped by Akaza, who tries to use a back fist strike, which is dodged by Tanjiro. Using this opportunity, Giyu attacks the upper rank. Tanjiro starts to get a grasp about the truth behind Akaza's techniques. As the fight between Giyu and Akaza goes on, Tanjiro remembers the time his father explains to him about correct breaths and movements and about being able to see the transparent world, which one can achieve if the mind becomes invisible. He demonstrates it by killing a bear while showing no killing intent. Tanjiro remembered that he managed to achieve this state for a short moment in time when Akaza attacked him. Closing off other senses and focusing on dodging, Akaza and Giyu are battling fiercely, trading blows with each other. Giyu has used up all his forms during the fight, and Akaza proclaims that it'll be the end of the Hashira. Amazed at how long he's fought for, as Giyu is about to attack the demon's fist, Akaza breaks Giyu's sword by using the bell splitter technique and attempts to punch through him, but his arm is severed by Tanjiro, who managed to enter the transparent world and increase the size of his mark. Akaza notices the changes and tries to kill Tanjiro. Giyu takes this moment to attack him, but Akaza uses his strongest technique, Technique Development Final Form Blue Silver Chaotic Afterglow. Giyu tries to reduce it with his 11th form, but the attacks were too random and powerful to completely cancel out, and he gets hit by many shockwaves despite managing to dodge several blows. Meanwhile, Tanjiro is able to see everything move slowly in the transparent world. Akaza is unable to notice that Tanjiro was behind him and thinks he's dead. Giyu hopes that Tanjiro will go for the neck in that instant. 
However, Tanjiro calls the demon out, saying he'll now cut off his head. Giyu thinks to himself that Tanjiro is stupid for doing so. Akaza turns to strike, but Tanjiro dodges. Akaza is confused that he could not detect his fighting spirit via the compass, and Tanjiro manages to decapitate Akaza with the Hinokami Kagura Setting Sun transformation. Akaza is bewildered, wondering how Tanjiro did not have any fighting spirit. Comparing this feeling to fighting against a plant, he acknowledges that Tanjiro surpassed his speed. He realizes that Tanjiro achieved the Domain of Supremacy, and we learn that this state is nothing less than the transparent world and a selfless state. He tries to attach his head back, but Giyu throws his broken sword, piercing the head, separating it from the body. His head disintegrates, but his body continues to fight, using his technique development Destructive Death Compass Needle while his head regenerates. Tanjiro dodges his chops but is thrown aside by the demon's kick. Tanjiro tries to get up and fight, but the stress and exhaustion of the fight caused him to pass out. Giyu protects Tanjiro with the water-breathing fourth form, Striking Tide, slicing the headless body in various regions, but Akaza regenerates faster. The two begin to trade blows, and although Giyu is badly hurt, he still focuses on protecting Tanjiro giving Akaza vague memories of Keizo. As he advances, he is stopped by the teary-eyed spirit of his human self's deceased fiancé, Koyuki, telling him to stop. Giyu continues to stand up, despite being burdened with the desire and goal to not let his friends or family die in front of him, like his sister and Sabito. Akaza was held by Koyuki's hand as his head continued to regenerate. Akaza begins to remember why he wanted to become strong and thinks back to the time he was the demon child Hakuji, from his father's death to meeting Keizo and Koyuki. He remembers trying to find a purpose and reason in life, finding someone to protect. His memories of his past suddenly come rushing back. We then see the memories of Akaza's human life. Hakuji was born and raised in the slums of Edo, the city we know as Tokyo, to a sickly father he deeply loved. In order to pay for medicine, Hakuji pickpocketed from people in town, but was caught three times. The magistrate beat him and marked him with tattoos, threatening to cut his arms off the next time he was caught and calling him a demon child. When Hakuji returned home after his third beating, a villager informed him that his father, having heard of his arrest, hung himself. In the letter he left, he stated he wanted Hakuji to live a full life and didn't want to take medicine if it was earned by dishonest means. With his criminal tattoos and no home to return to, Hakuji was eventually banished from Edo. Devastated by the loss of his father and enraged at this society they lived in, where he couldn't afford his father's medicine, he picked fights with people and beat them up. One day, after nearly killing seven adult men in a village, he was approached by Keizo, the owner of a local dojo. Annoyed by the man's cheerful demeanor, Hakuji challenged him to a fight, but was defeated with ease. Keizo then took him in, so he could nurse Koyuki, Keizo's sickly daughter. Her mother, her previous caretaker, drowned herself due to stress, and Keizo had to work handyman jobs to keep them afloat. So Hakuji was tasked with tending to her. Already accustomed to caring for his father, he had little trouble, though he found it awkward when she burst into tears seemingly at random. One of those times, unbeknownst to him, he had indirectly motivated her by telling her that there will be a next year to see a local fireworks show. One day, he discovered that Koyuki had been forced outside and left there by the heir of the nearby Kenjutsu Dojo that sought Keizo's land for themselves and prevented him from getting any students before Hakuji. Enraged, Keizo and Hakuji fought the dojo, and after defeating nine people, Hakuji made them promise to never get involved with the Soryu Dojo or Koyuki again. The heir of the rival dojo became enraged and swung a sword at Hakuji, only for him to use his bell splitter technique and punch the side of the blade, breaking it. The other members of the dojo were so moved by the beauty of this technique that they accepted their loss and apologized for the rudeness of their heir leaving the Soryu Dojo in peace. Two years later, Koyuki's health improved enough that she could stand and do chores. 
Hakuji continued training as Keizo's pupil of the Soryu style, and the dojo began to grow. One day, Keizo offered to let Hakuji take over the dojo and take Koyuki as his bride. To Hakuji's surprise and embarrassment, he agreed, silently vowing to protect both of them, even at the cost of his own life. At a festival, Koyuki told him of her past, asking if he was really okay with the proposal, to which he reaffirmed his vows to her, promising to protect her for the rest of his life. The heir of the rival dojo heard about Hakuji's marriage to Koyuki, so he gathered some angered disciples and fought Hakuji, but they lost. Tragically, this victory was short-lived. Hakuji went to his father's grave to inform him of his marriage, but quickly realized something was amiss upon his return. A student from the dojo informed him that the rival dojo had poisoned the well where Koyuki and Keizo drank water from. The two died shortly after drinking that water while Hakuji was away. Enraged, Hakuji killed all 67 members of the rivaling dojo with his bare hands, pulverizing them to the point where their corpses were no longer recognizable. This incident caught Muzan Kibitsuji's attention, and though he was disappointed to find it had been a human rather than a demon who'd done such a gruesome act, he decided to make Hakuji one of the 12 Kizuki. Hakuji, with nothing left to protect and having lost his will to live, accepts and becomes the demon Akaza. During this, Tanjiro manages to wake up and Akaza's head has halfway recovered. The demon attempts to kill Giyu with his destructive death annihilation type, and Tanjiro rushes to stop him, but his sword slips and instead he punches Akaza, causing him to question his current deeds and beginning to regret sullying his master's precious style. As he prepares his technique, Tanjiro tries to pull Giyu away, but with a smile of gratitude on his face, Akaza uses the technique on himself. Mutilating and pulverizing himself and reducing many parts of his body to bones. Akaza admits defeat, stating that Tanjiro's technique was magnificent and that he wants to go to hell like a man. He imagines his father and Keizo, but when he remembers Muzan asking if he wanted to get stronger, he begins to regenerate. He's stopped by Koyuki, thankful about Hakuji recovering his memories and thanking him for what he had done. Finally finding peace, Akaza disintegrates, dying as Hakuji, a loyal son, a protective student, and a faithful lover. Hakuji reunites with his father Keizo and Koyuki in hell. Tanjiro is glad the battle is over and wants to reach Tamayo, but he faints again. Giyu also loses consciousness and slumps onto his sword out of fatigue. Akaza's death was spread by a crow and was heard by the other upper ranks. Kokushibo laments that he could not get any stronger and called him weak. Doma begins to openly weep and mourn his best friend, though his actions are later proven to be a facade. Shortly after the fight between Kanao and Inosuke against Doma, Tanjiro wakes up with Giyu cauterizing his wounds and receives knowledge of the death of upper rank 2. I hope you enjoyed this fight summary video. If you did, don't forget to check the amazing video we made about Kokushibo versus the Demon Slayers. Thanks for watching, and remember, this video was sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. I'll see you on the battlefield.